Amen. We're going to start this all over again. So the thought I want to use this morning is the pregnant pause. What is a pregnant pause? A pregnant pause is a pause that gives the impression that will be followed by something significant. According to the Urban Dictionary, it is the silence that occurs after someone has said or done something that leaves everyone who has bored witness to the event speechless. According to the English exchange, it is a comic timing used to heighten a comedy element where the comic pauses at the end of a phrase to build up. In other words, it's when a person pauses to build up suspension in the listener or the viewer's eyes for a greater dramatic effect of what follows after the pause. And we know that anything that is pregnant has developed a seed now that is implanted inside of them. And over time, this seed grows and grows for nine months until it is ready to be birthed. And after this birthing process, the seed develops personality. They begin to change in form. They change their looks and they follow the guidance of their parents but most importantly what happens after birth depends on labor and the way the baby adapts to life outside the room if the baby has breathing or other difficulties after birth, it is up to the doctors and the nurses to assess the baby and decide what sort of medical attention this baby needs. So now as the seed grows, the child develops into a miniature you or to the environment that they are familiar to. Yet they have their own personality, they have their own character, but what happens is now when the seed that you are carrying is born with a birth defect. My God, what do you do when over time something tragic happens? What happens now when life gives us a pregnant pause? Mm. And I am reminded in the year 2020 that when we all have endured what we call the pandemic, Many lives were put on hold. Everything around the world went to a complete stop. Many lives were hushed, never to see this side again due to COVID-19 or the coronavirus. Many of us were left with trying to cope with the unknown. And for many, their lives will never be the same again. <coughs> Excuse me. But for others, it was a time that... um that to birth new ideas, new businesses went on the arise. We were all left with reminder that we are not in control. We had to adjust to doing things virtually, washing our hands and wearing our masks and keeping six feet apart. And so it is that when a seed is planted and it is given birth, we are not in control what happens after the birth. And even during the birthing process, we must understand that we are not in control. We can take all the Lamaz classes and, and understand it never prepare us for what will happen in the birthing room. We can read all the parenting books, but it will never really prepare us in being good mothers or good fathers. And so it is. We are left now with a pregnant pause anticipating that everything is going to be all right a child was healthy a child had 10 figures he had 10 toes and and we never prepare that even down the road that there can be an accident or even death we never anticipate that pregnant pause and so as we look at the text today king saul and jonathan they were both killed and a result of a battle with the Philistines and Mount Gabor. 
And King Saul, we know, he killed himself, but he fell on the sword. And Jonathan was killed in the battle. But there was a son by the name of Mephibosheth. Jonathan's son now was left under the care of the nurse, or what we know today as the nanny. And the Bible said that she picked him up and she ran with him to hide him or to protect him from being killed. However, the unthinkable happen my god she dropped them have you ever had good intentions but you fell short have you ever made a mistake that caused harm to someone else have you ever been going along with life and suddenly all hell break loose at no fault of your own so here we find that Mephibosheth nurse which meant in the Hebrew text to support to be faithful and to know the one who was supposed to protect my God, Mephibosheth, the one that was supposed to protect you, drops you. And the Bible lets us know that his nurse picked him up and she ran with him and he fell and he became lame. What do you do now when it's those in whom you love has mistreated you or ostracized you or rejected you? Many of us may feel a certain way. It brings about animosity it brings about hard feelings and years can go by and unforgiveness now begins to settle in not realizing that many times all it takes is communication and forgiveness so Mephibosheth nurse now was only trying to protect him but she went into panic no why because when the word reached the palace that Saul and Jonathan were killed by the Philistines everyone knew that their lives were in danger and as a tradition the new king was to kill all the heirs to the old king's throne so the nurse grabs Mephibosheth now and she won and the fall caused Mephibosheth to be forever crippled in both of his feet and I'm sure she lived years of being uh, afraid or, or years are blaming herself for her carelessness my god i'm sure there are some listening to me right now saying or hoping that you can change things from your past but let me encourage you that the past is the past it didn't work it didn't go the way that you planned it to go you have found yourself my god between a rock and a hard place not realizing that god is only preparing you my god so that you may be that that you that you may be what he have called you to be you may be in a pregnant pause right now and even through the pandemic we were given space and land to breathe to be able to think to appreciate life to be grateful and to be thankful my god even as a pregnant body now is full of meaning with the little human being this pregnant pause is full of meaning with silence my god even being quarantined if you think about it many marriages and relationships didn't end in divorce it gave us the opportunity to draw closer to god many churches closed their doors but we had a choice to either sit on the side of the bed or to watch virtually by way of zoom or a conference call or facebook live but many drew strength in their faith and they became stronger while others turn away from their faith for many it calls us to draw closer to god my god we had the experience now of the pregnant pause so now as we look at the text between first samuel 31 and second samuel chapter 9 mephibosheth now was in a pregnant pause years had gone by and he was living in a place called low debar low debar simply means a place there was no pastor my god there was no word there was no communication his his physical deficiency left him emotionally deprived my god he allowed his handicap now to define him many of us today have allowed what others have 
have said about us to hinder us from moving forward into the things of God. Many of us have followed up, oh God, has allowed our past to define our future, my God. We have allowed our circumstances, our environment to define us. We have settled for low-level living when God has called us for so much more, my God. As we look at the text now, Mephibosheth was of a warrior bloodline. Yet he was living in low Debar. He was living in a place of lack, a la oh God, a place of poverty. And King David now, as Saul's servant, is there anyone left in the house of Saul to whom I can show my God the kindness for Jonathan's sake? Oh God, Ziba told David that there was a son, not even given the son's name, but he began to describe his condition. My God, there are some people right now who see potential in you, but will not recognize you by your name, but recognize you by your condition. They will label you, my God, by where you live. Oh, yes, I know her. She's the one that lives in the trailer, or she's the one that walk around with the limp, or she's the one that has the child that is own drugs. The only way they know you is by your condition. But can I remind someone this morning, my God, that you are not your condition. You are not divine, defined, oh God, by others. You are not your circumstances. You are not the product of your environment. As the psalmist declare in Psalms 139, that God, my God, God created us that we are fearfully and that we are wonderfully made. Wonderful are God's work. Our soul knows it well. God formed us in our inward parts. He knitted us together in our mother's room. He framed, oh God, our frame is not hidden from him. And even when we was made in secret, my God, from the depths of the earth, guess what? He knew us. God's eyes saw our unformed substance, my God, and in his book were written every one of them, oh my God, the days that we were formed was unto him. So Mephibosheth now had allowed his condition to define him. But King David summoned for him, and when he did, Mephibosheth was afraid. He didn't know if David was going to kill him or not. But David assured him that he came to show him kindness for the sake of his father, Jonathan. David said, I will restore to you all the land that belonged to your grandfather, Saul, and you will always eat at my table. Can I minister? to the someone for just a moment. I know you have been dropped and you feel that all hope is gone, but let me remind you that God is a restorer. He has not forgotten about you. My God, you may be in a pregnant pause, a place of silence, a place of solitude, but just as God spoke to the prophet Joel in chapter 2, verse 25 and 26, my God, he said, I will restore to you the year that the swabbing locust has eaten. My God, the hopper, the destroyer, the cutter, my great army, which I have sent among you. You shall eat, my God, in plenty and be satisfied. And praise the name of the Lord your God, who has dwelt wondrously with you. And my people shall never again be put to shame. My God, David remember the promise that he made to his friend Jonathan. And the Bible said that even after now that David showed Mephibosheth kindness, instead of him accepting it, he bowed down before David. And the Bible said when he did, he said the 
these words. He said, what is your servant that you should notice a dead dog like me? Oh my God. Mephibosheth had been in that low place for so long that he considered himself worthless and insignificant. Listen, the enemy is after my God. What the anointing that you have on your life. The enemy is after you. He wants to kill you. He wants to destroy you. He wants you to believe that you are worthless, my God. He wants you to feel like you are insignificant. But may I suggest to you that while you are walking through the pregnant pause, God has so much in store for you. Let me encourage you this morning that you are worthy. You are special. The enemy only desires, my God, to steal the hope and the future that God has for you. But let me remind you that the devil is a liar. He has been a liar even from the beginning of time. He's only trying to stop my God, you from doing God's will for your life. You have been brought with the price and God has a plan for your life. So just as now as we remember Mephibosheth, the same God knows your name. Just as David remember Mephibosheth, the same God knows your name. Jeremiah 29 and 11 declares, for I know the plan that I have for you, declares the Lord. Plans for welfare, welfare, not for evil, to give you future and a hope. And in Isaiah 49 and 16 says this, behold, I have written your name on the palms of my hand. Always in my mind is a picture of Jerusalem walls worn. God has seen the tears. He has seen the hurt. Just, oh God, you just need to be still and keep silent. And while you are experiencing now the pregnant pause, remember what he told Jeremiah in chapter 1, verse 5. He said, before I formed you in my in your mother's womb, I knew you before you was even born. I have consecrated you and I have appointed you. And so now the Bible tells us that David, he began to summon Zibel and he told him that he and his family would be Mephibosheth's servant. They were to farm the land and to bring in the crop. No longer would a son, my God, a warrior team, live in low the bar but he will always eat at the table understand that God has prepared a table even for us today in the presence of our enemies the mere fact that Jesus paid it all we have a trust now to either receive what he had for us and once we receive Jesus we are made worthy oh God of anything and everything that God has for us we are no longer oh God dead dogs, but we are warrior team. As First Peter 2 and 9 lets us know that we are a chosen generation, a warrior priesthood, a holy nation, his own special people, that we may proclaim the praises of him who has called us. So may I speak to every Mephibosheth this morning, my God. You may be or have been in a pregnant pause and you may still be lame in both of your feet, my God. You may still have a thorn in your side, but God has let us know that his grace is sufficient, my God, for us. God has called us now to progress, to come out of Lodabar. God has extended his love for us when he sent his son to die, my God, for each and every one of us. God favor us. You are not your condition. You are only what you believe yourself to be. It doesn't matter where you've been or what side of the tracks you have come from. You can come to the king's table, my God. He is your Lord. He is our God who has brought us out of Egypt, out of the land of slavery. Everything
thing that he had promised he would do. My God. And what I want you to understand this morning, don't die during the pregnant pause. If God said it, he is going to do it. My God. Numbers 23 and 19 remind us that God is not man, that he should lie. Not a human being, that he should change his mind. Does he speak it? Will he not do it? Does he promise it? My God, will he not fulfill it? Understand that he is our refuge in the time of trouble. He cares for those who trust in him. You may be in a low place right now, but I command and I decree and declare that it is time to come up at the king's table. It is time to get rid of that Mephibosheth mentality. God sees something inside of you. Every day is not going to be a mountaintop experience. You are going to experience some valley days, but understand that while you're in the valley, that is the time when God begins to grow us. Don't allow, oh God, the enemy to dictate to your mind and say that you don't matter. Don't allow the enemy, my God, to push you in the corner, but you continue to look to the hills from which cometh all of your help and realize that all of your help come from the Lord. Understand this morning, my God, you may be walking around with the limp, my God, but the word of the Lord tells us that he's more for us than the whole world against us. You may be the only one on your job that is saved, but you keep holding up the bloodstained banner. You may be the only one, my God, that stand for righteousness, but you keep standing for righteousness and understand, my my God, and when you do what God has called you to do, he will elevate you, not man, my God. Get your eyes off of men. Get your eyes and ears, oh God, out of oh God. Start allowing the enemy to speak to your mind. Start allowing the enemy to speak to your ear and know that God has a purpose and a plan for your life. You can eat, my God, at the table, my God. You can eat eat forever at the table, my God. If we suffer with him, my God, we shall also reign with him. My God, the pregnant pause. We came from 2 Samuel chapter 9 verses 3 down to 12. I know that my my my, my life, it, for the first time in a long time, it died because the enemy did not want me to encourage you this morning. Somebody needed this word, but we give him all the praise because he does not get the glory. God gets all the glory this morning, my God. The thought for this morning was the pregnant Paul from 2 Samuel chapter 9, verse 3 through 12. And if the other video is still up, you can go back and read those verses or go back and read it at your time of leisure. Let us pray. Father God, we thank you. Lord God, we bless you. We honor you. We thank Thank you for being the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords. We thank you that while we are in our waiting period, mm, while many of us are in that low place that we won't stay there, but we will come up out of the pit, my God. You have a purpose. Hallelujah. You have a plan for our lives. I speak to every Mephibosheth this morning that you are royalty, my God. God we thank you this morning that you chose us. We did not choose you, but you chose us. It is up to us to accept you into our lives. You sent your son to die for us, my God. What greater love than no man, a man that will lay down his life for a friend. So God, we thank you this morning for this word. That while we're in the pregnant pause, while we're in a place, my God, a solitude to and silent, that you are doing a great work. We thank you this morning and what you have instilled inside of us. It will grow, my God. The baby will be birthed. We don't know the outcome, but God, we know, my God, as long as we keep our hands in your hands, oh God, and everything is going 
to be all right. So God, we thank you, Lord God. We bless your name this morning. God, we give you all the glory. And we say, oh God, that it is so. And now God, we come against the spirit of backlash, the spirit of retaliation, delay our immediate recounsel, every plot, every scheme of the enemy. And God, we seal this word by the blood of Jesus. And we say that it is so. And so it is in Jesus' name. Amen and amen. God bless you all. Listen, God is a restorer, my God. And and I come to realize in on this journey, even through the prophets of old, even through Job and different ones that God has showed us who he is. Every time something is snatched from us, my God, don't crumble under the pressure. Can I say that again? Don't crumble under the pressure. I know sometimes it gets hard. Sometimes we say, God, I don't want to do this anymore. God, I didn't sign up for this. But we cannot afford to stay in that place of low debar. God has a purpose and a plan for our lives. The enemy wants to shut the mouths of the believer. He wants to take your prayer life. He wants to take, my God, you from not reading the word of God. He doesn't want you to read the word of God. He wants you to stay there. He wants you to look at your condition. He wants you to look at your your circumstances. And some of us are believing God for some things in our lives. Listen, God is more than able. There is absolutely nothing impossible for our God. If we just trust and believe, it may not come today. It may not come tomorrow. But whatever God has promised unto you, it shall come to pass. Can I say that again? Whatever the Lord has promised you, it shall come to pass. Be encouraged even during the pregnant pause, the place of pure silence. When it seems like God is not speaking, when it seems like your prayers are only getting no further than the ceiling, you keep on praying. You keep on fasting. You keep on reading the word of the Lord. You keep on giving him glory. You keep on praising him even though you don't see the manifestation. You keep on worshiping him. Many times all it takes is our worship. God wants to know what are you willing to sacrifice for him? My God. What are you willing to give up for him? Are you willing to forsake mama and daddy? Are you willing to forsake your friends? Hallelujah. Are you willing to let go of those things that are so dear to your heart. My God. Because many times we're going to go to that low debar place. Oh, but understand that even in the text this morning, God lets us know that there are room for us at the table. You don't have to stay there. It's time to come out of your low debar. My God. Listen tonight by way of conference call. Please join us. Ha. Huh? Glory to God. Please join us as we come together and we begin to pray at 8.30 p.m. Listen, this is this is our time of worship. This is our time to get out adoration to our God. This is our time to tell him we thank him, how we appreciate him. It's not so much that we go before him always asking, but God, we just want to thank you for being God. We want to thank you for being our strength, for being our protector, for covering us. Oh God, we just want to thank you because we have a savior that we we can go to in the midnight hour. My God in Zion. That's at 8.30 tonight by way of conference call. And if you can't join us tonight, please join us on Monday night as we are studying. We are worshiping God through his word. In order to have a relationship with someone, you have to know them. My God, the way that we know God is through his word. He is the word. 
word. He is the truth. So join us on Monday night by way of conference call at 8 p.m. If you can't join us on Monday night, please join us back here again on Wednesday morning as we are doing the theme that the Lord has given us. And if the Lord says the same, it, this is not the end. It is only the beginning. And again, I apologize for the first video. The enemy did not want this to get out. But I, I decree and declare that God gets all the glory. Again, please go back at the other video. Other video is still up. And please go back and look at it. Listen, something great is going to happen for you. Because we serve a great and mighty God. Have a blessed and wonderful day in the Lord. God bless you.